Hello again, Coffee Chat friend. Steve here with a few words on a few things, including the concept of being a radical. Well, first of all, I'm trying to shake things up a little bit and just show you my surroundings here. I'm at the Rotary Park on Ferry Island here near Terrace. And though it doesn't look like much, it looks a little bit drab today, it is absolutely spectacular. I'm putting my camera on the kids' play area here. It's about minus three. It's slightly snow falling. You can't quite see the snow, but there's about six inches of snow on the ground. I was out for a little bit of a run. Just regular pair of slacks. Nothing athletic about this. This is hillbilly running at its best. Um, for those of you who are down south and maybe don't get to enjoy this winter kind of weather, there's probably no better climate to run in, really, or exercise in, because you can never really get too hot. If you get a little bit hot, just take a layer off. i got a jacket on, a sweater below, shirt below. It's all really good. Now, I wanted to, to get back to <laughs> the post I want to talk about today. I want to talk about, to continue along the lines of radicalism. We talked about revolution yesterday, but the entities within the revolution or what we want to call ourselves, or what the, the, what we are doing in a way by wanting to improve ourselves, is being, we're being radical, right? Because if we just go by whatever the Joneses are saying, go by what society wants us to do, we're just we're we're just following the medi mediocre. Whereas the radical is <laughs> interesting enough. I looked up the root word of this, the etymology, and surprisingly enough. It actually means root, R-O-O-T. It comes from, it's related to the same word as radish. The radish, the little root vegetable. In other words, in definition, going to the essential, in the definition of the etymology. The root, going to the essential. So we're gonna talk about that in terms of ourselves. What are we essentially, maybe, right? Just sharing some ideas, once again, on improving the quality of our life experience. And though, yes, radicalism can seem to decrease the quality of our life experience momentarily, but a fulfilled life is surely got to be more of a life worth living and a life of more quality, more genuine, deep down, root quality, right? Now, I mentioned a few radicals maybe yesterday, or at least one I thought of Marilyn Manson. Uh, his message my daughter was telling me is just off the charts ridiculous I never actually watched anything I just thought it was interesting because here's a guy who's living according to his according to what what's going on inside of him rather than just what society is saying right probably I mean there's probably a lot of damage control going on there's probably a lot of shall we say um, doing things to sort of cover over injuries in the past you know, almost like self-medication through action, if you will, or through presentation. Probably a lot of that. But nevertheless, it's not, he's not wearing a suit and tie that everybody else tells him to do, right? I thought of a few others too. A guy like Martin Luther, I mean, original Martin Luther, who had enough of what his bishops and everything were telling him to do, and he went out and he nailed a sign on the door of his church saying, no, from now on, I can actually read this stuff myself. I don't need you guys telling me what it means. I can read it and interpret it through my sense of spirit or God or whatever. And he was a radical, right? And this, this whole reformation began, this protestant movement. And there's a, an eagle flying up there. If I turn the camera around, you probably won't see it, but there's lots of those guys around too. That's really cool. Anyway, another one is just add King to the end, Martin Luther King Jr. There's another Martin Luther who you know, as much has been said about his his downfalls and his, you know, his his issues in life and so on. Nevertheless, it seems like he's the kind of guy who stood up in spite of what people were telling him. In fact, probably might even be people tell him, "Look, you better shut up, buddy, or you're going to be six feet under." But he didn't stop, anyways. He kept going. I think of in terms of a lot of the people who speak for freedom, and this goes back to the dawn of humanity, right? People who speak for freedom ended up on a cross, having to drink hemlock, or being thrown in jail. You know, I think of the, the Baha'i people in in Iran right now. Many of them are, you know, if you're Baha'i, you're in jail. That's like synonymous. If you're in, you know, it's, um, 
a Baha'i is always a prisoner basically because they say you've got to believe in this religion if you believe in this other religion we'll put you in jail until you say that you will change and then so they're radical I mean a guy who's gonna say I'd rather stay in jail than to live what you're telling me is a radical right because and lots of others I know a guy who's a political prisoner in this area we called Canada he's been in jail for over a year um, no convictions lots of attempts at convictions but they can't make anything stick because they can't prove that he's done anything wrong and apparently the judge has told him that you know some people have told I don't know if it's a judge somebody's told him you're here for your political beliefs so you know anybody who gets the illusion that somehow we live in a free society of all voluntary elements probably fooling yourself but that's for another time now before we get messed up with this concept of radical that we think we have to put ourselves out and get thrown in jail and stuff no I mean like I said yesterday there's this one lady who I know to a certain extent and who somebody has made the comment at one point that she is a radical yet what does she do she lives in a little convent and sometimes lives in the bush in a hermitage on her own just contemplating about what I don't know but nevertheless the app the, the comment was made that this individual is doing something radical. You know, it's, it's her belief system. She sees value in it. And she's going to do it. Not because somebody, some earthly character anyways, told her she was going to do it. She made a decision she was going to do it. And she is living a radical life. She's taking herself out of the mainstream of what people should say the way you should dress. She dresses in this weird uh, medieval gown with a headdress on with a thing around her waist and a bunch of beads hanging off of it and she goes out with slippers and lives in a hermitage lights her own fire you know fasts for long periods of time that's a radical thing to do but it's not out there in your face nobody knows about this individual so being radical is about in a way is about being ourselves getting back to the root of what we think we are what we can perceive ourselves to be getting back to the, our own personal or our own individual radish if you will what is our essentiality? What's essentially us? Now, if we really look at it, how we can do this maybe, well, suggestion, how can we do this? Well, if we use empiricism, logic, logic, we can see ourselves as individuals in this land. The only place that we can experience anything or know anything is in and through ourselves. The trees over here that I'm looking at, I only see them here. When I think about you that I'm talking to, I'm only doing that here. Everything in our world from a logical standpoint and an empirical standpoint because empiricism is the experience of right it's only in here somehow so what we think of as out there from our experience is only in here so the opinions that other people are going to give us on how to live our lives have got to get transmitted and interpreted here so we're the arbiter right we can choose to or not because I'm going to make the point here, when we add our empirical evidence of that, everything taking place in here, and our ability to, to make a decision. Now, some people will say we can't make a decision. I say that's BS because here, to some extent that is true, but to where, but if that is true, then that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is the stuff that we can make a difference. I can say, Steve, meaning this individual character standing in front of you, turn this way and walk over there. And I start walking. Now, who made that decision? Well, the thing that I would call I, or the entity I call I, the power, the life force, whatever I call I, said that, drove the body to do it, right? So we can see that we have an experience of this, and this is all that really matters in terms of the decisions that we can make. We can turn, we can revolve, be revolutionary, turn ourselves back into that, that root that radish that essential us of experience and make decisions is it easy no not necessarily because if we've been if we've been used to a certain way well the reality is it's always been that way it's always been that way we just thought it was other people right so is it easy well we're doing it all the time it's easy to change no not necessarily because there's effort in that any change like is it easy to turn this relatively yeah but it takes effort and the bigger the change of course the greater the effort but nevertheless we can make decisions and we can turn 
And when we do that, especially back to what's a truer sense of ourselves, we are in fact being a radical. We're getting back to our essential selves, back to the root, back to the radish of what we are, more grounded in the ground like that radish of what we are. And even we realize at that moment, even all that stuff we thought we were being told by other people to wear the ties and all that sort of stuff, we realize as conscious beings now, we are still the ones who accept that in and put it to work as in our actions. So we're still the ones responsible in the here and now. Yes, we could say we weren't responsible when we were little babies and stuff like this, but that doesn't matter now because now we get to see that for what it is. Be grateful if we want for the opportunity to wake up and yet put that reality, that awakening experience of holy shit, yeah, that's right. We can actually have that now be part of our realization of what we are essentially, what our radish, what our radicalism really is, which is really just being ourselves and living the way we see best, which is means what is most effective for us in what it is that we want to do in this moment, this week, this life, whatever we want to call it. No more excuses. We own our lives to that extent, to the extent that we can make a decision, realize to an extent what we are, make a decision within that, and go with it. Hope this is important. Hope this is interesting information, if nothing else, but valuable information at most. And it's been a joy talking once again. My fingers are starting a little bit numb. So like I say, it's about minus three, not that big. But nevertheless, um, I can feel a little bit. And it's great chatting again. We'll talk again in a day or two. Okay, bye-bye for now.